ये प्री ये प्रीकास्ट प्रीटेंशनड बीम ऑफ स्पैन सिक्स मीटर इस ऑफ साइज वन ट्वेंटी फाइव एमएम इनटू टू फिफ्टी एमएम सो दिस इज़ द रेक्टेंगुलर सेक्शन प्रीस्ट्रस्ट बीम द स्पैन लेंथ ऑफ़ द बीम इज़ सिक्स मीटर द प्रीस्ट्रसिंग फोर्स इज़ अप्लाइड थ्रू बॉटम कर्न पॉइंट ओके सो द प्रीस्ट्रसिंग फोर्स अप्लाइड as usual at the bottom of the beam an initial precessing force of 250 kN was applied with a loss of precess 15 percentage okay so uh, initial precessing force 15 kN initially it is applied 15 kN but finally it is not 250 kN so 15 percentage losses is occurs okay so cast in situ slab is 450 mm into 40 Yeah, mom. Okay. So above the beam, a cast in situ slab is there. The composite beam supports a live load of five kilonewton per meter. Calculate the resultant stress developed in the precast unit and the cast in situ slab. Assume the pre-tensioned unit has unpropped and propped during casting of the slab. Assume the modulus of elasticity of concrete for the precast unit as 1.25 times the modulus of elasticity of cast in situ slab. So obviously, the cast in situ slab grade is less, and the cast uh, that the pre-stressed beam uh, concrete grade is more. So obviously, strength more means modulus of elasticity also more. Okay. So this is the question. So what they are asking? Calculate the resultant stress. What is the final stress developed in the entire concrete beam? Okay. So next we will start our uh, problem. First, stress due to pre-cast pre-tension member. That means uh, first we have to draw the first two diagrams. What is the first two diagram? Students here you can see. First diagram is initial pre-stress and the second diagram is effective pre-stress. So how to calculate these values? So now the parameters or area of cross section. Here the area of cross section is we are focusing only pre-stressed beam. Okay, so the size of the beam is one twenty five into two fifty. So the answer is three one two five zero mm square. So this is the area. Next section modulus. So section modulus is nothing but z. Z equal to b d square by six. So what is b? One twenty five and d is two fifty square divided by six. So the section modulus is one point three into ten power six mm cube. One point three into ten power six mm cube. And also initial precessing force. Initial precessing force is two fifty kilo newton. Initial precessing force is two fifty kilonewton. Okay, so from this two fifty kilonewton, there will be a losses is occurs. That also we have to find later. So first, we have to find the what is the initial stress. So for that initial stress, we have we know the formula. F is equal to P by A plus M by Z. P by A plus M by Z. So P. We can modify this formula according to that eccentricity. So P by A plus P E divided by Z. P by A P plus P E divided by Z. So now the eccentricity value is not given. So it is approximately uh, eccentricity is equal to d by six. Sometimes in the question they will given. Uh, sometimes it may not be given. Okay. So substitute E is equal to d by six in this formula. So P plus Y plus P into d by six divided by b d square by six. So here you can see here six six cancelled and one d d cancelled. Okay. So balance thing is P by Y plus P divided by b d. What is b d? So breadth depth breadth into depth what area? Okay. So it is A only. So P by A plus P by A. P by A plus P by A what? Two P divided by A. Two P divided by A. Okay. So two into two fifty into ten power three 
into area 125 into 250, which is equal to 16 Newton per mm square. So this is the stress. That means initial stress. The initial stress of the beam. So in the question, the given the losses. What are the losses? 15 percentage. So what is the balance thing? So 15 percentage loss over. So what is the net value now? 0.85 percentage. Sorry, 0.85. That means 85 percentage is the balance to one. Okay. So therefore, the final stress. That means effective stress is 16 newton per mm square into 0.85. 0.85. That means already 15 percentage is over. That means losses is gone. There are many losses we know already in uh, second unit we seen. So some losses it's gone. So balance 85 percentage only finally is there in that uh, pretension cable. So this is our initial stress 16 newton per mm square. After losses, final. Our effective stress is sixteen into zero point eight five. So, what is the value? It is thirteen point thirteen point six newton per mm square. Mm square. Okay. So, otherwise, here I multiply by point eight five. Otherwise, one more method is so we have to calculate the What is the net uh, pre pre stressing force? So that is 0.85 times of the initial pre stressing force. So 0.85 into 250, we got 212.5 kilonewton. This is the uh, final pre stressing force. You substitute this pre stressing force here instead of 250. 250 is initial pre stressing force. The final pre stressing is 212.5 kilonewton. So you can substitute here. Finally, you got thirteen point six only. Either you can do like this because all other term to that area one twenty five to fifty are common. Only thing is this two fifty only varying. So for two fifty it is sixteen. For two twelve point five it is thirteen point six. That's all. So now you can see the diagram, the students. Now here see, this is a uh, unpropped under, uh, this is propped. So this is our initial pressures, initial pressures. You can see plus sixteen, okay. And this is our effective pressures, thirteen point six. So initial pressures uh, for two fifty kilonewton, it is sixteen. For final pressures or effective pressures, fifteen uh, percentage loss after pressing fifteen percentage loss. So sixteen into point eight five, we got thirteen point six. So this is the stress distribution diagram for initial stress and effective stress. Okay, students. So this is our your first step. Next, we have to calculate the sulfide of the precast beam. Sulfide. So how to calculate sulfide? So since Uh, size of the beam is given 0.125 into 0.25 into 24. Okay, so this is the sulfide of the beam. So this 10 to 3 and all not required. Don't make confused. So 0.125 into 0.25 into 24. We got 0.75 kilonewton per meter. Okay, this is the sulfide of the precast beam. So next, moment due to sulfide. Okay, moment due to sulfide. So same point seven five, zero point seven five, zero point seven five into uh, W H square by eight. Okay, we know the formula. If U D L load is acting as simply supported beam, the maximum bending moment formula is W H square by eight. So therefore, zero point seven five into six square divided by Eight. So we got three point three point three seven five three 
kilo newton meter 3.375 3.375 kilo newton meter this is momentum okay we substitute it in terms of kilo newton and meter so 3.375 kilo newton meter okay so now stress at the top and the bottom of the beam so since we need to calculate stress what is the stress unit it is newton per mm square so therefore you have to substitute convert this kilo newton meter into newton mm so therefore 3.375 into 10 power 6 into 10 power 6 That means I converted kilo newton meter into newton m. Okay, stress at the top and the bottom. So m by z formula, z value we already calculated, bd square by six. So what is this value? Two point six newton per m square. So stress at the top two point six newton per m square, and uh, stress at the bottom two point six newton per m square. Because self height is same. Okay, so now you can see the diagram. Students, please see the diagram. so stress due to self height of the beam so always we know that always in a simply supported beam always if gravity load is acting top fiber subjected to compression so plus and bottom fiber is subjected to tension okay so minus so here we are using pre stress so pre stress means it uh, bend upwards so here bottom fiber subjected to compression so in the first two case that means initial stress and effective stress bottom fiber subjected to compression top fiber subject to tension okay so top fiber extreme fiber it is zero stress there is no stress and bottom fiber 16 okay so this is the so same thing in propped condition also unpropped and the propped self height will not change self height is stress okay so we calculate an initial stress effective stress self height stress okay so next coming to self height stress due to slab so so far we seen a uh, self height stress due to beam so next is self height stress due to slab so now self height of the cast institute slab so what is the size of the cast institute slab 40 mm by 450 mm 40 mm by 450 mm you converted into meter okay so 0.04 into 0.45 into 24 so this 1000 means converting mm into meter so the answer is 0.432 kN per meter this is the self height of cast institute okay so next moment so w l square by 8 so same formula so whatever we discussed here same formula w l square by 8 w is for 0.432 and l is 6 square by 8 so 1.94 kilo newton meter okay so next stress at the top of the precast unit okay stress at the top of the precast unit that is you can see in this question sorry diagram so you can see here stress self height stress slab so we know that in unpropped condition the stress due to cast institute slab is transferred to the pre stress beam okay so this is the diagram so our top fiber 1.49 bottom fiber also 1.49 okay you can see here So stress at the top and bottom. Actually, they didn't mention bottom. So top and bottom. Top and bottom of the precast unit, which is equal to so moment one point nine four m by z one point nine four kilonewton meter. You convert it into m newton m. So therefore, one point nine four into ten power six divided by Is that one point three into ten power six? So we got one point four nine newton per mm square. One point four nine newton per mm square. 
okay so the here they didn't mention compression tension this is all wrong okay so here also this compression tension and all will come here so both a uh, top fiber compression bottom fiber tension okay so now coming to composite section so so far we seen beam separately and uh, slab separately now coming to composite action taking bottom of the reference so first we need to calculate the y bar and i axis and z d and z b so this b you already know how to calculate z t z t means section modulus at top z b means section modulus at bottom and i axis value okay so for calculating uh, z t and z b we need i by y max i by y max so if we need i means we need centroid distance so this is the cross section of the beam so we need to calculate centroid so centroid uh, formula you know a into x1 bar a1 into x1 bar plus a2 into x2 bar divided by a1 plus a2 so this is the formula okay so here we can see students since it is two different materials are there please note down here two different materials are there one is pre stress beam and another one is uh, normal rcc so we have to combine means we have to make into homogeneous one member so for that purpose what we have to do we have to multiply by the modulus of elasticity on the cross section of the beam you can see here uh 450 into 40 into 270 this is for slab okay so plus 1.25 so here student you can see 1.25 is the modulus of elasticity okay modulus of elasticity it is given in the question you can see read in the question uh assume the modulus of velocity of concrete for the precast units as 1.25 times the modulus of velocity of the cast into into slab so we need to convert into transformed section that means two section is converting one section so therefore 1.25 into the size of the beam 125 into 250 into 125 125 is the centroid distance and again area a1 plus a2 so 1.25 into um uh, 125 into 250 plus 450 into 40 so therefore y bar is equal to 170.7 mm this is y bar okay from bottom of the beam you can see this is y b bottom of the beam this is y t y t y b y t so how to calculate y t so overall depth of the beam find out overall depth of the beam Minus y b, so we got y t. So from this uh, calculate area of cross section. Sorry, uh, moment of inertia. So what is the moment of inertia formula? B d cube by twelve plus y into h square. Okay. So these are all fundamental thing we already know. Okay, students. So from this you calculate i x x. I x x value. So next coming to z t. So what is a uh, formula I X X divided by top means Y T. So Z T is equal to Z T is equal to I X X I X X divided by Y T. So same way Z B is equal to I X X. divided by y b so this is the formula okay so using this formula next we have to find out the live load moment what is the live load is given udl load 5 okay since it is udl load so formula is w l square by 8 it is 22.5 kN meter this is the live load moment okay so the live load stress need need to calculate live load stress so moment due to live uh, moment due to live load 
that means 22.5 actually m d kaadu this is m l this is m l so m l divided by z t and m l divided by z b so stress at top and stress at bottom so m l 22.5 into 10 power 6 divided by z t 3.9 into 10 power 6 so since uh, last slide we see and m l 22.5 into 10 power 6 divided by 2.7 into 10 power 6 so stress at top fiber 5.7 newton per mm square stress at bottom fiber 8.33 newton per mm square okay so this is plus value that means compression and this is tension okay so let us see in the, the diagram 5.77 you can see students 5.77 and 8.33 8.33 so this is the live load stress so next coming to for uh, unpropped condition over so resultant stress is the summation of one so next coming to propped uh, construction you can see for prop if the precious beam is propped the self height of the slab acts on the composite section so moment due to self height what is the moment due to self height so we already know uh, 1.9 into 10 power sorry 1.9 kN meter okay so this we already seen in the second step so substitute to this moment in the composite section so therefore so instead of so uh, we calculated zd and the zb so we have to substitute this dead load moment Okay, dead load moment. Moment for that we already know for propped condition the section load is taken care by the beam only. Okay, to the beam only. So therefore, uh, slab weight moment divided by Zd, Zt, we got a point five newton per mm square. And at bottom slab moment divided by Zb. Okay, so this only a uh, Uh, confused one. Okay, if you understand means it is very easy. So compression and tension. Now you can see point five, point seven two. You can see this diagram. Self height of stress slab. Point five and point seven two. This is for proper condition. Okay, students. So instead of one point four nine, we got point five. And bottom also one point zero one point four nine we got point seven two. Okay, so first you understand the difference. What is the the only thing that is the only difference? So here you can see we are calculating self height of the cast into slab. From that we calculated moment and we applied the actually the load calculation moment all are same. So only the difference is that is there. So here. we have to put pre stressed concrete beam z value okay but in case of unpropped condition but in propped condition we have to put the transformed section transformed section z t and z b value so this is only one difference okay so this 3.9 into 10 power 6 and 2.7 into 10 power 6 is for transformed section uh section models but in previous case but in previous case you can see this 1.3 into 10 power 6 is nothing but the not a transformed section only the pre stress concrete beam is at value okay students so based on this draw the diagram now you add all the things you can see all the things here up to this portion there is no stress only 5.7 is there so you directly write 5.7 next coming to bottom 16 plus 13.6 plus -2.6 minus 1.49 minus 8.3 so the resultant stress is 1.18 so now what is this intermediate value so this intermediate value that means that the junction between pre stress concrete beam and cast institute slab the junction between precious concrete beam and the uh, cast institute slab in, in that junction we have to find out the stress so how to calculate 
by similar triangle principle so we know that yt and this is yb this is yt and this is yb and for this 119.3 we got 5.77 and for this side okay for this side how much okay that means from 119.3 minus 40 we got this value so how much 119.3 minus 40 it is 79.3 79.3 So apply similar triangle principle for one one nine point three height. The stress is five point seven seven. For seventy nine point three height, what is the value? So we got three point nine four. So now you add all the values: two point six plus one point four nine plus three point nine four. Okay. So the summation of all the values, we got the final resultant stress. Final resultant stress. Okay, so how much? So two point six plus one point four nine plus three point nine four. So we got eight point zero three. So three point eight four plus four point three point eight four plus four point zero nine. So nearly it is eight only. Okay, so the summation of value it is around eight. Okay, you can write here in this portion. Okay, students. So, so this is the resultant stress value. So next coming to here. So here also for seventy nine point three. So for this side is seventy nine point three. Seventy nine point three height. So what is the height? So for one on nine point three, it is point five. For seventy nine point three, the corresponding stress is zero point three three. Okay. So that so two point six plus zero point three three, and the corresponding this side also we have to calculate. Okay. So the final answer is four point one seven. So next coming to top, it is 0.5 plus 5.77. So you can see here at top 0.5 plus 5.77, we got 6.27. And bottom 16 plus 13.6 plus minus 2.6 minus 0.72 and minus 8.33. So finally we got a plus 1.95 newton per mm square. So this is your final stress distribution. Okay, students. So this is the important very very important problem in the composite section okay so after the end of the class i will share one more problem so please go through that problem okay so far better understand if you have any doubt means you can ask me okay students so more uh, one of minutes is there students uh, don't rejoin after 2:10 uh, okay after 2:10 uh, no need to rejoin today we will see only one this uh, this problem only one problem only so tomorrow we will go for next problem okay so now we go through the step by step Students, see step by step. If you have any doubt, means ask me now.